<laughs> no, let's get, go to the to the to the idea of the golden record. Oh yeah, the golden record. Any anybody knows here what the golden record is apart from like? Uh, Don't be shy. Put up, if you know what the golden record is, put up your hand. No, is Ale Alex doesn't yeah? count. So there's <laughs> one person who knows what it is in the what room. What it is? Yeah, it's basically. Yeah. So, so we're going to show an Im some images Can of it. Can we show it? But Can we show Gian it? Gianluigi said, you know, if, if, if the metaphysical club had to have a kind of curatorial, um, a curatorial mission, uh, what would you propose? Would be the cu to the other phys metaphysical members that were here, what curatorial proposition would you would you propose? So. Here's my proposition to the other members of the Metaphysical Club and to the students, and hopefully together we can see it, um, what comes from it. Um, the Golden Record, um, what was your name? Nicholas. Nicholas said the Golden Record was sent to space on Voy with Voyager, which, which is absolutely right, and it was in 1972, and it was a series of discs that um, were, it was Carl Sagan, and part of a team um, that he oversaw um, put into space with NASA a series of phonograph records. And they um, went into, uh, the, the Voyager mission was a deep space mission. So the idea was that in 3,000 3, oh. years, the, this was the sort of, they were gold plated and they were kind of copper oxidized so that they would last as long as was we, we, we could possibly make them last. And they were sent into deep, into interstellar space. In fact, I think it's about another 20,000 years they will hit, 20 to 30,000 years they'll hit interstellar space. I um, mean, they're still going. They're going, they're going, they're going, they're going. And the idea is that they will at one point maybe come into contact with an alien life form or that they will be found by a future human race, maybe. Um, this was our, this was, a cultural offering, so there was 137 images, there was five hours of music, it was supposed to be the, um, the sound of Earth, um, they had music from Stravinsky, Bach, um, Chuck Berry, um, whale sounds, um, and kind of m ritual sounds, sounds of water, and there was images from, from, from to represent Earth culture. They were designed, um, there was a sort of hieroglyphic system used to explain to non-humans how to use this. Um, they had to assemble a phonograph record, put the disc into the phonograph record, play it, and the projected sound and image would be projected. And that was how aliens were going to experience Earth culture. In 2022, which is in seven years, it will be the 50th anniversary of this moment. I don't think that we should let future aliens Most have people. this as the only record of, of, human, of, of human culture. But that's not really the point. The point is more the curatorial question. What would it look like? What would it contain? Um, would it contain... Um, would it be a golden USB stick? Would it contain a million images? Would it contain fewer images? Would it contain sound and video? Would it contain multimedia? Um, would it be projected? Um, Holograms. Would it be augmented reality? What would it be? How would it be designed? How would it be delivered? Um, for me, this kind of long durational uh, project, the idea of you put something out to be this, this sort of future relic, this kind of future uh, uh, archaeological discovery, 3,000 years into the future, poses some really interesting curatorial questions. At first, the idea was quite um, specific to me, which is like, this is a time capsule, a magazine's a time capsule. We mentioned time capsule. It's kind of like a magazine in space, but it's not. It's, it's, it's a much bigger question than that and it's one that I hand over to you and the, the club to help figure out. It, it, imagine this is an incredible challenge because it's the ultimate educational tool because it has to educate people that or peopleoids that we don't even know if uh, they exist uh, to learn to uh, you know that now there are machi intelligent machines that learn from other intelligent machines how to communicate 
And this is something that is done, and it's a big, giant leap. In there's a company in London called uh, Mind. Um, I don't remember the name, but it's just been acquired by Google for an incredible figure because they learn, they like basically program the software that learns from another software how to play very basic games, which is not a pre-programmed software. It's a software that learns. So many, many people might ask, what the hell has this got to do with another magazine, Dazed, me, us, the Metaphysical Club? But, you know, I think it was a, it's a proposition. It's something that, um, you know, is about meaning. It's, it sort of comes back, you know, when I revert it back to my work and what I do, it comes back to making meaningful work, making work that's going to, you know, publishing stories that are of cultural relevance. You know. Yeah, and this is also a story that we all can write. I think that uh, this could be a very interesting theme for the next meeting of the Metaphysical Club to come up with uh, ideas for this if it, Even if it never actually gets made and goes to space, just the dialogue around it could be fascinating to, as, a cultural as a curatorial proposition. So.